Today we are up here motorcycle camping. It is early March. If I fall over, at least it'll be on camera. Way more fun when you're not fully loaded and not by yourself. There is a legit corpse in the campsite. Why did I decide to cut right through this knot? Because I'm an idiot. People who wear uh, high-vis vests don't steal. I think that's a scientifically proven fact. You really want that on your conscience? I don't think you do. Dogs. <laughs> nice. It's like you're trying to play the accordion, but you don't know how to play the accordion. And also the accordion okay. is falling apart. That's like a Burger King Whopper made out with the Burger King Whopper. Shockingly, his super motoed out DRZ is uh, is not liking the start in the cold. It's possible I may have overpacked the 300L Rally, but it is winter, we're motorcycle camping, and I want to be warm. I'm the Dork in the Road, and today we are up here at motorcycle camping. It is early March, and I wanted to get one more winter camp in this year before spring hits us in a couple weeks. But I thought I was going to be camping at my secret spot tonight, but there is way too much snow up on top of this mountain for me to be able to get to it. So we're actually going to camp at a lower spot, but we're going to ride through some snow on the way there. So it's a true winter camp. We get that good winter feeling before we camp a little bit lower so uh, Timbo, who was joining us later, can get there. He's not bringing his KTM, he's coming up on his supermotos. But we're here on the rally, I've got it packed to the gills. Giant Loop Great Basin saddlebag with my Cactus Canteen water carrier attached. I overpacked, but I need a lot of firewood to stay warm, so I'm not screwing around with this setup today. But let's get up in the hills and uh, enjoy ourselves and get some camping going. Okay, if I fall over, at least it'll be on camera. <laughs> ah, the old karate kick move. Gotta love it. Come on, little rally. Time to shine. 2 p.m. A lot out here a little later than I planned, but that's okay. It doesn't get dark till about 7, so I have plenty of time. And since I know where I'm going, if I didn't know where I was going, it might be concerning, but I do, so I'm not that worried about it. 300L is handling this weight surprisingly well. It has a stiffer rear spring. You guys knew that uh, because that's what Eddie put on it because he's a large fella just like me. But uh, even with the extra camping gear, and there's probably 40 pounds of stuff back there, um, eight pounds alone in the one gallon water thing. It's doing great. And honestly, it's not as gutless as you'd think. So I haven't had it on the gravel yet, but that is coming very soon. We'll see how we do. Fun little bike though. I don't know if you saw the video where I scouted up here on the 450L, but I got into a bunch of snow. I'll link that for you. Oh, that was literally yesterday, so. My guess is the snow is gonna be a similar uh, consistency and uh, amount. There's literally always someone here. It is the middle of the day on a freaking Thursday and someone's here shooting. Ooh, snow up there. Snow up on top where we're headed. You see it up there? Look at that. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm gonna take it easy, nice and slow. I know there is snow right here. Yep, lots of snow. Lots of snow. Okay, well, this was on the road yesterday. Oh, I lied. There it is. This is the spot yesterday. I was like, ah, that's probably all there is. And I was uh, super wrong. So, yeah. Yeah. Here's where it gets interesting. Actually, riding through some. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. Not yet. This is a spot I considered, but it's a freaking nightmare with garbage and debris. And uh, I don't like the proximity to the main road, to be honest. Now we're in some snow, bro. Snow trekking across the universe. This is good right here. See, we're in snow, actually in the snow. We press on. Good stuff. Good stuff, bro. Oh, yeah, another week like this. I don't know how much snow we'll have left. That's melting pretty quick, honestly. Snow, 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 riding in the damn snow. Some would say it's not smart, but who said I was smart ever? Not me. I'm dumb. Actual snow. 
and ice we're riding on top of right now. Yeah, this is the spot right here where uh, where I shouldn't have stopped. But it's all fun and games on dry pavement. It's a whole different uh, experience when you're actually riding on snow. I should probably get a picture here because this is a good spot for it. Right here. For those of you who are curious, MT21 front, D606 rear. I was up here yesterday on D Sports front and rear and they did great too. So not bad. We're not getting into a ton of snow, but we are getting some, as you can see on the road. Just a little bit more snow exploration and then we'll head to camp. It's way more fun when you're not fully loaded and not by yourself. You can do dumb stuff like try to go in the middle or ride through like snowy fields and you know turnouts and stuff but okay nope 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 yeah so we're getting to the point where there's ice underneath that's not what i want this is interesting because yesterday there was a nice layer of wet sticky snow on top of this compacted ice at the bottom of the ruts and right now it's just the ice so i've got very little traction on the icy stuff when the ruts aren't clear which is a problem on the front so Take it easy, head to camp. Just roll through, baby. Roll through. Walk that tightrope. Yeah, I can hear the ice crunching under my tire. I'm just gonna stay in the rut where the pavement is, shockingly. There's a very cool friend already at the campsite. It's already sort of occupied by a corpse. And you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. There is a legit corpse in the campsite. I discovered it yesterday. I'll introduce you when we get there. Okay, here's our turn. Onto the gravel. And onto the camping. Shenanigans. Let's see how it does on these potholes with all this gear on the back. This could be interesting. Should I hit one on purpose? Oh, it's not too bad. I mean, I think we got the spring compressed. It's honestly probably better because I think the preload is jacked all the way up exactly for moments like this. So the rest of the time it's too harsh and right now it's where it's supposed to be. Yeah, it actually does feel like it's handling better. That's funny. Yeah, it does. It's normally too squishy or too hard, I should say. Yeah, that's better. Okay, this handles better when it's fully loaded. Good to know. That is what Eddie set it up for. Yep, much better. Also, there's a tree down here that I hit literally every time. Every time. I don't remember which corner it is, but every time I come around the corner and I hit it and I forget it's there. This is my favorite splashy spot. It's kind of anticlimactic today. Oh, this thing is fun to ride fast. Like just piss wind it, like a slow bike ridden fast situation. This is a good one. You think Tim's gonna be able to find his way out here? He's never actually been to this site before. Oh man, it just eats it up when it's loaded. That's awesome. That's it right there. That's it right there. Yeah, it's like all the way over the middle of the road. I didn't hit it this time. Ha ha! And that's why we look farther ahead, kids. Oh, that's okay. I found another one and another one. Okay, we're going up. snowy corner yeah all right we're turning this is actually a sweet spot i can't believe i haven't camped at it before i think it might even be big enough for me to get my trailer turned around down here if i'm so inclined someday and look at all the down wood everywhere i think we're covered firewood wise i feel pretty good about it and really good tent spots and look at these tracks I'm was here yesterday. Hmm, I wonder who that was. I'm gonna tip over, bro. I'm gonna tip over. I'm not putting any of this in the video. So what's the hardest part about motorcycle camping? Oh, that's easy, getting off the bike. <sighs> Let me introduce you to our corpse friend. Now, I'm 95% sure that's a deer, but a little one. 
That's because I've seen a few deer skulls up by my house and that's what they look like. And there's also a lot of deer fur here. I'm gonna hope poachers killed it and scavengers cleaned it off. Cause if not, then there's a mountain lion nearby and well, I actually know there is one cause I've seen it a mile from here, but it'll leave us alone, right? We're here, we're camping. Let me show you the site. It's just an old logging landing, but I like the location that there's a lot of firewood nearby. So there's my bike, big pile of wood that's too soggy and wet to use. I think I'm gonna put my tent right there cause it's the flattest spot here. There's not really any good flat spot cause we're on a hill here. Fire pit, and then there's a really cool kind of wooded area over here with a bunch of firewood. I just jumped on Guy and double checked. We are in fact on BLM land. So we can camp here and harvest firewood for campfires. You can't like come in and harvest a truckload, but you can harvest enough for a campfire. Uh, we want to stick to dead down and dry as much as possible, but there's not a lot of dry. So dead standing is the next best. So I have to scout around for that, but I'm going to get my stuff out and get my tent set up. Uh, got to get step one done so that I can move on to step two, if you know what I mean. Worth mentioning, I've got my giant loop one gallon cactus canteen. This is the replacement for the Pacific Northwest Green Manta Ray, but it attaches right here to the Great Basin bag, as you can see, but with the spigot on the bottom, which I'll show you later, I don't even have to take it off to use it. Honestly, I generally don't like to camp in spots that have obviously seen this much use. One, there's just garbage and crap everywhere. Like there's literally a sofa over there. And two, it means the chances of somebody showing up are higher, right? That's why I like my spot where, you know, if I leave a stick on the ground, it's there six months later, but couldn't get there too much snow. So uh, I doubt we'll be interrupted, you know, in March this early in the year in the winter, but in the summer, this is not probably a spot I would choose because I don't want to be interrupted my random rednecks. Actually, a lot of traffic up here today. I can hear it. Another truck going by. Don't like it. That's why I don't like these spots. Step one's complete, so let's think about step two before we get real serious about harvesting firewood. Probably should have a beer first. But this is a Rogue Dead Guy Ale, so Rogue actually reached out to me and was like, hey, do you want to try some more stuff? And I was like, I love your stuff. You know, you guys may remember from the, anytime I go to the coast on a coast camping trip, we always eat at the Rogue Brewery. And uh, I love their whiskey and their beer. And so they were cool enough to send me some samples. So this is the classic dead guy. They actually sent me four beer samples. I left the IPA at home. So I'm not a huge IPA guy, but I will drink it at some point. Uh, this is the Pilsner. This is the dead guy pale ale. So let's have one of these. You can see there's like a triangle that tells you the flavors on the back. So this one leans towards tropical citrus and malt. Even their ales are a little IPA. -y. They're a little hoppy. How shook up is this? <sighs> Not too bad. It's gonna be cold tonight, like freezing or at freezing. So we're gonna want fire to stay warm, which means I need to find a log or two. 
that I can cut into pieces, buck up, and then maybe even split. Cheers, here's to you. Thanks, Rogue. Go check out Rogue's website. They sell all these pale ales, and they also make whiskey. They sent me some whiskey, which I'm excited to get into because it's one of my favorites. Mmm. Yep, that is a pale ale that tastes IPA. -y. It's definitely got that cit citrusy hoppiness. It's good though, lots of flavor. Okay, well, that beer was delicious and refreshing, but if I have another one before I get firewood, I'm not gonna give a crap about getting firewood, so. Guys, remember the old Agua Canyon, Boreal 20, 21? 21, yeah. Haven't used this in a while. Keep camping in places where I can buy firewood, but this is my favorite folding saw. People are like, why do you have such a big saw? Well. It's faster and I can take down bigger logs and it's fun. So let's see what we can find in the woods. This is pretty promising. It's all dead and down. So, oh yeah, it's dry, dude. It's pretty dry. Good, okay. That's not that far from camp. Oh yeah, it's very dry. That's good. That's good wood. Oh, I missed my chainsaw. Uh, love this thing, dude. Love this saw. This is very dry. Why did I decide to cut right through this knot? Because I'm an idiot. This is it's not effortless, but it's a lot easier than it should be. So much for that shirt. I gotta quit wearing shirts I like camping. That ought to get us started. If not, there's plenty more where that came from. All right, well my tent is set up. Firewood's mostly gathered and I know where there's more if I need it. I'm gonna take this opportunity to run into town get some beer so that I can come back and change out of my riding gear and just settle in and wait for Tim, maybe even get a fire going. It's about four o'clock, so it'll be almost dinner time when I get back. People always ask me, how can you stand to leave your stuff in the woods? How do you get over the paranoia? Aren't you worried about people taking it? Uh, super worried. In fact, it is all I will think about while I'm gone, but uh, I don't really have a choice. So I can't haul all my gear back because I won't be able to bring back what I need. So it's all about priorities. This spot is Fairly secluded. Sorry, I'm just doing a circle to show it to you. I don't normally like do a loop every time I ride out of here. But it's fairly out of the way. So the odds of someone happening across it are pretty low. And if they did, hopefully they're a decent human being. And if they're not, well then it's nothing I can't live without. It just ruins the camping trip. My expensive camera gear is with me. Based on the tracks, it's not been many people up here in weeks from what I can tell. So we'll be all right. But anyway, we're going to ride back down. I'll spare you most of that. Motorcycle guy. What's up, WR? He had gear loaded up. Hmm. Curious. I hope he's not going to my site. That would be weird. I'll get back and that'll be a neighbor. That would be strange. But that was a cool WR with big tanks. Maybe you're a fan, I don't know. You look like a jovial sort. People who wear uh, high-vis vests don't steal from campsites. I think that's a scientifically proven fact. So I'm not worried about it. He's probably gonna be up there watching it. He'll be guarding it for me. He's like, I'll just... Didn't want your campsite to be left unattended and I was wearing my vest so people would know. Don't mess with it. Brownsville is a very small town. They don't even have a real grocery store. All they have is this really big convenience store. So around here we have Dairy Marts. This is a dairy market.
I realize I'm biased, so take it with a grain of salt, but I love those dry pods that come with the saddlebags from Giant Loop. I can just put my ice and beer in it. The beer will stay cold. And, you know, waterproof dry bags are waterproof both ways, so it'll keep all the moisture in so it's not in my saddlebag. And then I'll just hang the bag up tonight and it'll be dry by the morning. Let's go see if anyone has stolen all my sh**. Oh, and pro tip, when you're putting beer in your horseshoe-shaped saddlebag, always put it on the non-exhaust side. It stays colder that way. Ask me how I know. Good news, I forgot about the branch again and hit my face on it really hard before I turned the camera on. So I'm back to being consistent. We're almost back. Make sure you hit the like button to ensure that my stuff didn't get stolen. Uh, you know, it's just how it works. It's like a wibbly wobbly timey wimey thing. So if you, if you don't hit the like button now, then my stuff will be gone when I get there, even though this video will have been filmed weeks before you're seeing it. Um, it's just how it works. So just don't forget to hit it. If it's stolen, I'm just saying, it's your fault if you didn't hit the button. Do you really want that on your conscience? I don't think you do. All right, moment of truth. Well, they didn't take everything because I'm pretty sure I just saw my tent and my dry bag. Oh man, looks like everything's here. They didn't take my sweater. That's crazy to think that they didn't take my sweater, my, uh, my base layer. Okay, I'm freaking out just a little right now. Uh, I just got back from town, changed out of my riding pants, and had a chance to look at my phone and have a Facebook message from my absolute favorite YouTuber, Joe Robinette. Like, millions of subscribers, like, my inspiration for all the bushcrafting things I've ever done, including the shelter I built on my property, and he was asking me for bike advice. Last time I was camping off my motorcycle, do you remember? I got a Facebook message from Everide. And now this time, Joe Robinette is messaging me. Holy crap, who's gonna message me next time? Morgan Freeman? Bruce Campbell? Sylvester Stallone? Wow, <laughs> that's really cool. I'm just, I was gonna like process a bunch of firewood and make a fire, but I think, I, I think that deserves a beer, right? Doesn't that deserve a beer? So I'm gonna drink this dead guy Pilsner and then I'll break up all this firewood. I'm mostly gonna be stomping it, so. I would worry about having too many beers and then, you know, using an axe, but I'm not. I'm just gonna have one and mostly break it with my feet. So the other one is long gone. That was hours ago, but. So if you don't follow Joe, I'll link his channel in the description. You should if you're into camping at all. Oh man, what a day. Anyway, thanks Joe for reaching out. Thanks for trusting me. Trusting my opinion it means a lot. Cheers. Mm. Wow. Is this my life? Winter camping. Joe Robinette's messaging me. Life is good. It's time for my least favorite part of camping. Processing firewood. Give me a chance to see what's dry and what isn't. Yeah, nice solid cracks. That's what I like to hear. But Dork, you brought a saw. I did. That's more work than this. The one advantage to being fat is you can use your weight to break things. We now have three piles. Well, four really. Those, these two pieces are pieces that I've cut. That's stuff that needs to be cut more potentially before I use it. Kindling, wood, and then I'm gonna try to saw through a couple more rounds of this big log and decide if I need to drag another one down here. Like that. Out of shape for this, bro. Get two hammers, but can't, can't hold it. <sighs> uh, it's actually kind of wet in there. Turns out in winter, the wood is wet. Nobody told me. Uh, that's enough of that for now. Let's see. And it's very wet inside. I was hoping that would not be the case. It's nice to have a big one instead of just a hatchet. You know, that one's half dry. It's not where I was aiming, bro. Seriously, this half is dry and this half isn't. There, I got the dry piece off.
You have the most camera instincts of any human I've ever camped with, <laughs> ever filmed with. Holy well, crap, Well, I spend a lot of time in front of the camera, you know. Dude, look, seriously, like the top of the frame is the top of your head. No shoot. And the bottom of the frame is the, is the damn axle on your front tire. That's awesome. Yeah. How was coming up this road on this? Actually, not that bad. No? No, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you like sliding around. It was better when I got to the gravel, honestly. I've never <laughs> used this grill before. How long have you had it? Uh, I bought it in 2014. That is a 2014? What were you, 11? I was. Let me get the grill I brought and we'll race and see who can put those together Let's faster. Let's do it. I literally have not used it yet. Oh, okay. But I got it on Have Kickstarter. you put it together yet? No, I've never put it together. Okay. I literally supported this $75 uh -huh. because it was such a cool idea. Daggerfish. Okay, this will be good because I don't know if I'm going to get to use it, but at least this way I get it in the video. <laughs> okay, Daggerfish versus what is that? This is the $20 Amazon special. You're already, you're, you're cheating. You screwed the cap on the end. Take that off, bro. <laughs> okay, I'm not even going to take mine out of the bag. Okay. Yours is like laid out. Oh, we got to set it down. It's like quick draw. Okay. <laughs> when are you ready? You want to count it down? I do not. Okay, go. Okay, go. All right. Whichever one wins. Um, Tim has to cook his food on. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, I'll look at like all the cards and stuff are still in here. The rubber bands are still on it. I might stop and have like chug a whole beer. <laughs> it's like tortoise in the hair right now. I'm about to win this. If I remember how this part goes, I think it goes like this. It does. Okay, wait, hold on. Uh, oh. Okay, I'm done. Ta-da! <laughs> this is a sick grill. I'm, it folds, uh, I mean, this is usable. It folds so flat. Wait, does that not even have like legs? No, oh, it has legs right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Honestly, I wonder if he's selling these yet or if you only can get them on Kickstarter. But it also came with a cutting board made of wood, I'm which just goes later. into it. Well, yeah, you're welcome to. And it's got these, so this is like chopsticks, tong, actually it's tongs, which are also chopsticks and skewers. Nice. Nice. Hold it's pretty that cool. Thought. Hold that thought. I thought it was pretty cool. So that was, I felt it was worth supporting. It was a quality idea, good product. Anyway, you just got your ass handed to I had you. a moment of clarity before I left the house and I grabbed... Tongs. <laughs> nice. <sighs> anyway, I'll just be here while you finish up. All right. Do you not want to use my grill? Or... No, 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 no. I don't need your grill. You know what would have been faster? Driving to my house and using my barbecue. My favorite is every time you get one in, three fall out. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is a quality product. Would you, if you were about to give this a review, how many stars would you give it right now? Well, I haven't fully used it yet, but... Just based off of the assembly alone, I would say zero stars. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. what's so, funny is my daggerfish grill costs three times as much, and yet I feel like it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. There's a word for this. It's like cluster hump, but dirtier. It's like you're trying to play the accordion, but you don't know how to play the accordion. And also the accordion is okay. falling apart. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh. All right. Are you giving up? No. You about ready to use my grill? Nope. You're welcome to use my grill, bro. I am too sober for this much comedy. I think it's one of those things that has a very specific order of operations. I noticed that, yeah. It's like it's like PEMDAS. You remember when we started this and it was a race? You mean yesterday when we started this? Yeah, and, and 12 minutes ago. And I put mine together in about three seconds. I don't want to get too excited. But... Okay. Time. 13.45 is what I've got. <laughs> Wait. It's not even done. Thirteen fifty. <laughs> Time. Okay. Thirteen fifty. It's on the fire. <laughs> it is much bigger than mine. I'll give you that. Need a hand, bro? Uh, yeah, I can use a hand. Holy shit! I didn't realize how much work. Tim did bring me a skewer, so I didn't have to go uh, cut one off a tree, which is good because it's dark and I don't want to. I brought Johnsonville chili cheese brats because you don't need condiments. All the condiments are inside the sausage. And I also brought buns, which I never bring. 
So I'm pretty excited to hook this hook this up. And the nice thing about these Johnsonvilles is when you're not sure what you're going to do for dinner, uh, they don't have to be cooked. They just have to be heated. You could literally eat them cold because they're already cooked. All you have to do is heat them up. So I could, if I had to, like if for some reason I couldn't get the fire going, put this in my jet boil with water. I can cook underneath your grill. That's hot. It's pretty yeah. weird how fires yeah, that's are hot. hot. Like, you know, this is probably... Yeah, it's plenty hot. Okay. Anyway, I didn't feel like being super complicated tonight, so I just brought brats. So bad for you. If chili cheese Fritos were meat, that's what this tastes like. Mmm. Cheesy. Tim sauteing up some vegetables. Actually, onions and fungus. The Gordon Ramsay of motorcycle camping himself, Tim Bothe. He just threw it all in the same pot. Okay. Oh, he's gonna toast his buns. His buns aren't toasty enough. Nice. Are you setting those on fire? No. No, I'm getting it toasted. Toasted, toasting the buns, man. What's the difference between toasted and burned? <laughs> uh. That's toasted AF. Toasted. Thank you. Just gonna slap that between those two buns and you know steak it. sandwich. <laughs> Do you want some of these um, Johnsonville brats to put on there? Um, maybe. Okay. Hold that, hold that thought. I might, might take you up on that. Can I zoom in on what you're doing? Fireside steak sandwiches. Dude, that is some... That's like a mile high. That's like a Burger King Whopper made out with a Burger King Whopper. Cheese. Magnificent. Definitely sounds like you just bit into a giant cracker. <laughs> cheers. Thumbs up, like the video. If you want to cheers it up, if you want to bite a Tim Steak sandwich. Did you eat both of those? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Good morning. Tim got up before me for the first time ever when we're camping. Tim made a fire before I got out, so um, I only had to sleep until 8.30 to make that happen. So I slept actually really well, except I had to get up and pee because I drank too much and I had a little headache. But other than that, I was cozy. It's... Tim and I were just saying, and as much as we hate to admit it because we're supposed to be like oh, badass winter campers, it, it really wasn't that cold. Not warm, but definitely not. I'll die without my bag. True to his word, Tim is making a breakfast grilled cheese sandwich. And then you gotta pull on the end to get the water to flow like a hydration pack. So you don't even need, theoretically, to take it off your bike if it's mounted vertically, which mm -hmm. is kind of how I had it on the Great Basin. I just took it off when I ran to town. You can just leave it on there and use the spigot on the bottom. It's pretty cool. It's really handy, actually. Yeah. It's almost like the people that design these things do this stuff. Hmm. It's crazy, Weird. right? <laughs> and that uh, that quick release, you can put so you can put your hose from your hydration pack, or I've got my gravity filter um, ah. that is on one of those hoses. Yeah. So super useful.
Okay, Tim, now that you've used it, assembled it, and disassembled it, how do you feel about your really awesome rack? Honestly, I'm kind of into it. So, uh, don't be surprised if you see it again. It's like you have to do a Rubik's Cube every time you want to cook? It's, uh, it's enrichment. Oh, okay. <laughs> you think it'll be faster now that you got the hang of it? No, well, maybe. I'm kind of an idiot, so I'll probably forget a couple times. That's true. Well, I'll show you the video. Ah, yeah. I got some research to do. There you go. When I get home. Nicer than you found it. it wouldn't be hard. I, know. I forget your tongs. I would definitely get AAA before I left. <laughs> you better get quadruple A for that thing. <laughs> dry pots are slick, dude. Yeah. Great camping with Tim as always. There he is. There's nothing left to do but ride out of here. Riding with Tim is never boring. <laughs> Shockingly, his super motoed out DRZ is uh, is not liking to start in the cold. So Tim may live here from now on. It's a nice spot, at least. Yeah, we saved some firewood. We're gonna push Tim's bike all the way up to the road that we came in on, because it's all downhill, rather than trying to bump start it a bunch of times here. Because that way he's pointed in the right direction and you know can try to bump start it more than once without us having to push it up a hill again. Gotta help out our Timbo, you know? Can't leave our boy stranded. He's sitting on the ground. This is as far as we made it. Oh, he died. Tim literally died. He's dead. It's fresh out of Tim's. Yeah, well, that happens to the best of us, you know. I died once. I hear it. I heard something. It's running. He got it. There he goes. The helmetless wonder. Look, there he is. Hell, when Tim's around, it's never boring, you know? It's never boring. That worked. Sounds like it started right up. Is that when you realized that you hadn't turned the gas on? You got a snot rocket, bro. Oh, you got it. I got that on camera. Let's stay with him and make sure it doesn't die again. Also, it will be interesting to watch a supermoto tear up these gravel roads. I bet I still struggle to keep up with him, even though I'm on dirt tires and he isn't. If you want to see more, more motorcycle camping adventures, misadventures like this, uh, ADV and dual sport riding, hints, tips, and tricks videos, and other content, please consider subscribing to the channel because I am the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy. And I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. I also want to give a big shout out and thank you to my channel members and patrons, without whom content like this would not be possible. Channel members and patrons get early access to videos, merchandise discounts, and other perks, including uh, free admission to the Dork Campout this July here in Oregon. If you want to be a channel member or patron, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon or two dollars here on the YouTube. But I'm going to let you go here, so thank you very much for watching, and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I oh, thank you.
kind of cool to come home to deer in my yard one two three four it's all right guys you're fine you're welcome to be here and they are these are our neighborhood deer they're here almost every day hi guys hi friends you're fine but they're also not that concerned you can see they're just casually strolling back into the woods no big deal Thank you.